The A-10 Warthog can fly with one engine, one elevator, half of its tail, and half of a wing missing. This aircraft simply cannot be shot down. In service since 1976, the Warthog has had a stellar almost 50-year career, and thanks to a long line of upgrades, it's not retiring anytime soon, at least not until the 2040s. And for good reason, too. No other aircraft in the U.S. inventory can offer better attack support than the Warthog. The only American fighter in history built from the ground up to deliver close air support to troops on the ground, the Warthog has saved more lives than most and is the reason why many vets can smell their flowers today. Now, with Ukraine in need of air base support to repel Russia's invasion, the A-10 Warthog seems to be coming to the rescue once again, as it has done time and time again, after triumphing in quite an interesting development story. The U.S. entered the Vietnam War in 1965. By then, its main ground attack aircraft was the outdated Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. The Sky Raider was slow, had poor firepower, and was so vulnerable to ground fire that 266 of them were lost in Vietnam, largely from small arms fire. The lack of modern conventional attack capability had become a problem, and the hunt for a specialized attack aircraft would begin. However, from the F-4 Phantom to the F-111 Aardvark, to Northrop's F-5 and then the A-7D variant of the LTV A-7 Corsair II, no attack aircraft could fill this crucial gap. And so in 1966, one year after the U.S.'s entry into the Vietnam War, it was time for the Air Force to quit trying to repurpose already existing aircraft for new tasks, but instead create a dedicated one specialized in the much-needed close air support. The program that would birth this aircraft was designated the AX program. The requirements for the aircraft were released by the Air Force, and interested companies could now submit their proposals. Of the six proposals sent in, Northrop and Fairchild Republic were selected to build prototypes. The YA-9A from Northrop and the YA-10A from Fairchild Republic were the prototypes, and they were in. All that was left was a fly-off between both aircraft, as there could be only one winner. Like it recognized that the better had to win for the sake of the troops at the front lines in need of reliable close air support, the YA-10A took to the skies and completely dominated the fly-off, meeting and surpassing the laid-down requirements. As a result, it was selected winner of the AX program, and as time passed, the $10 million production version would become known to the Allies as the A-10 Warthog and to enemies as the sound of an unending barrage of Gatling cannon rounds raining from the skies as the aircraft protected entire fleets of American troops and their allies. And it continues to do so today. However, to remain lethal in an ever-evolving battlefield, the A-10 has been upgraded from the brute metal raining attack aircraft of the 1970s to the intelligent brute metal raining attack aircraft of the 2000s that shouldn't be messed with. An offense suite that enables it to drill holes in metal faster than a caterpillar drill, a defense armor that gives it more lives than a cat, and an avionics suite that makes it intelligent enough to be mistaken for a Tesla product, the A-10 is the one attack aircraft that's never out of place in any mission. To be as lethal as it is, the aircraft was built around its main weapon, the 30X 173mm GAU-8 Gatling-style Avenger autocannon, which was also developed as part of the AX program. The GAU-8 has a high muzzle velocity and a super high rate of fire that enables the cannon to fire 3,900 large depleted uranium armor-piercing shell rounds every minute. With the high precision of the aircraft's aiming systems and the vantage point of being in the sky, this hydraulically driven seven-barrel rotary autocannon is enough to round up an entire army of enemy infantry, armored personnel carriers, and tanks in minutes. Aside from the autocannon, the A-10 is armed with the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missile. Targeted using electro-optics and infrared, the Maverick allows target engagement at much greater ranges than the cannon, and thus results in less risk from anti-aircraft systems for the A-10. In addition to these weapons, the A-10 has been upgraded to wield a plethora of newer weapons, including cluster bombs, Hydra-70 rockets, GPS and laser-guided bombs, such as the GBU-39 Small Diameter Bomb, Paveway Series Bombs, Joint Direct Attack Munitions, Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser, AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon Glide Bombs, and AIM-9 Sidewinder Air-to-Air Missiles. 
For electronic warfare, the A-10 has been upgraded to fly with an ALQ-131 electronic countermeasures pod. The A-10 backs this impressive offense with just as impressive defense. After all, being so close to the battlefield grounds is sure to attract constant fire from anyone that's got a weapon. To handle this fire, the A-10 is battle-hardened to an exceptional degree. Approximately 6% of the aircraft is heavy armor, enabling the aircraft to survive direct hits from high-explosive and even armor-piercing projectiles. It has double-redundant hydraulic flight systems and a mechanical system as a backup in case hydraulics are lost. In fact, if an engine, one elevator, half of its tail, and half of its wing are all lost, the A-10 stays flying and with sufficient control for the pilot to return to base. So, attacking the plane's exterior is an unlikely way to take it down. And to protect the interior, the A-10's cockpit and parts of its flight control systems are protected by a lavish 1,200 pounds of titanium aircraft armor, referred to as the bathtub. The interior surface bathtub directly exposed to the pilot is covered by a multi-layer nylon spall shield to protect against shell fragmentation. As a result, the bathtub can withstand strikes from 23mm cannon fire and some indirect hits from 57mm shell fragments. The aircraft's front windscreen and canopy are also designed to resist fire, particularly small arms fire, as that's what's most likely to hit them when the A-10 angles towards the ground to take out enemy ground troops. To prevent the attacks from the ground troops from hitting the aircraft's fuel system, all four fuel tanks are located near the aircraft's center and are separated from the fuselage. This way, projectiles would need to first penetrate the aircraft's skin before reaching a fuel tank's outer skin. Most fuel system components are located inside the fuel tanks to benefit from this protection and to prevent fuel loss from component failure. This setup almost completely eliminates small arms fire as a threat. Still, there's more protection for the tanks. Reticulated polyurethane foam lines both the inner and outer sides of the fuel tanks, retaining debris and restricting fuel spillage in the event of damage. All engines are also shielded from the rest of the airframe by firewalls and fire extinguishing equipment. In a worst-case scenario event where all four main tanks are lost, two self-sealing sump tanks contain fuel for 230 miles of flight, likely enough to fly the aircraft back to base. Overall, the A-10 is almost impossible to shoot down thanks to these automatic defense setups in place, and the fact that the aircraft is more often on the attack as it picks up threats far sooner than threats can spot it. This early sensing is thanks to an intelligent avionics suite that feeds today's A-10s with all the relevant information about the battlefield in real time. These avionics include the remotely operated video enhanced receiver to provide sensor data to personnel on the ground, a missile warning system, an ALQ-184 ECM pod that works with the missile warning system to detect a missile launch and figure out which vehicle the missile came from, and then issues the appropriate fiery response. The A-10 is also fitted with a Pave Penny laser receiver pod, which receives reflected laser radiation from laser designators to allow the aircraft to deliver laser-guided munitions, an inertial navigation system, a low-altitude safety and targeting enhancement, which provides computerized weapon aiming equipment, and a ground collision warning system. It's an infinite list of avionics with the A-10, and these avionics, combined with the aircraft's armor, armament, and overall lethality on the battlefield, is why everyone wants the U.S. to send the A-10 to Ukraine to repel Russia. Ukraine has continued to ask for attack aircraft from NATO. With the American A-10 being the best attack aircraft there is, it's not much of a debate what attack aircraft Ukraine needs at this point. And the U.S. military seems to be willing to share although they had never shared the A-10 with any other country before. When asked if the U.S. could give the A-10s to Ukraine, the Air Force Secretary, Frank Kendall, said the U.S. is open to discussions with Ukraine on what their requirements are and how the U.S. might be able to satisfy them. Regarding whether or not the A-10 will arrive in Ukraine, the world will have to wait and see. All we can say for sure is that the A-10 Warthog is the U.S. military's go-to tank buster aircraft. And with so many Russian tanks in Ukraine, the A-10 would prove priceless for Ukraine's forces, saving Ukrainian lives as it has done for Americans. For over four decades, it has been an aircraft to admire, to respect, and to be proud of. And the best way to show you're proud of it is by subscribing to this channel and giving this video a like. That would be all for this video. From Front Cost and the A-10 Warthog, 
thanks for watching.